Chapter 13, Deciphering the Message. June headed for home and Lena went in the opposite direction across Harkin Square. The little group of believers had gone, but the protesters with their signs continued to pace back and forth. A few of them were still shaking their fists in the air and yelling, but most of them tramped silently, looking tired and discouraged. Lena felt a bit that way too. Once Dune said he'd seen a door, she was sure that door he'd found, and the door and the instructions were the, in the instructions were the same. She had had such hopes for the, that door in the pipeworks, but hoping so hard had made her jump to conclusions. She had gone a little too fast. She was all she always went fast. Sometimes it was a good thing, and sometimes not. Now Dune thought the instructions were nothing important after all. She didn't want him to be right. She didn't want him. Didn't be, she didn't believe he was, even now, but her th thoughts felt like a mess of tangled yarn. She needed someone wise and sensible to help her sort things out. She headed for Gloam Street. Though it was nearly six o'clock, she found Clary still in her workroom at the far end of Greenhouse One. It was a small, crowded room. Pots and trowels cluttered the high table at one end, and above the table were shelves full of bottles of seeds and boxes of string, wire, and various kinds of powder. Clary's desk was a rickety table littered with scraps of paper, all of them covered with notes in her neat, round handwriting. Two rickety chairs went at the rickety table, one on each side. Lena sat down facing Clary. I have to tell you some important things, she said, and they're all secret. All right, said Clary. I can keep secrets. She was wearing a patched shirt that was faded from blue to gray. Her short brown hair was tucked between her ears, behind her ears, and a bit of leaf clung to the right side, hand side. She folded her arms in front of her on the desk. She looked square and solid. Well, the first thing is, Lena began, that I found the instructions, but Poppy had chewed them up. The instructions, said Clary, I'm not familiar with them. Lena explained. She went on to explain everything, how she had shown the instructions to Dune, what they had figured out, how he had searched the pipeworks and found the door, and what he had seen when he opened the door. Clary made an unhappy sound and shook her head. Oh, this is very bad, she said, and sad, too. I remember when the mayor was first starting out. He has always been foolish, but not always wicked. I'm sorry to know that the worst side of him has won out. Clary's dark brown eyes seemed to grow deeper and sadder. There's so much darkness in Emberlina. It's not just outside. It's inside us, too. Everyone has some darkness inside. It's like a hungry creature. It wants and it wants and it wants with a terrible power. And the more you give it, the bigger and hungrier it gets. Lena knew. She had felt it in Looper's shop as she hovered over the colored pencils. For a moment, she felt sorry for the mayor. His hunger had grown so big, it could never be satisfied. His huge body couldn't contain it, and it made him forget everything else. Clary let out a long breath, and a few scraps of paper on her desk fluttered. She ran her fingers through her hair, felt the bed of leaf, and plucked it out. And then she said, about these instructions. Oh, yes, said Lena. They might be important or they might not be. I don't know anymore. I'd like to see them if you'd let me. Of course you can see them, but you'll have to come home with me. I'll come now if that's all right, said Clary. There's plenty of time before lights out. Lena led Clary up the stairs into her new bedroom in Mer at Miss Murdo's. Oh, nice room, said Clary, looking around with interest. And I see you have a sprout. A what, said Lena? Your bean, said Clary, pointing to a little pot on the dirt on the windowsill. Lena bent to see what Clary was talking about. Sure enough, the dirt was heaving up a little. She touched the pushed up part, brushed away the dirt, and discovered a pale green loop. It looked like a neck, as if a creature in the bean were so trying to escape, but still hadn't managed to pull out its head. Of course, she already knew that plants grew from seeds. But to have... To, but to have put that flat white bean in the dirt, to have almost forgotten about it, and now see it forcing its way up into the air. It's doing it, she said. It's coming to life. Clary nodded, smiling. Still amazes me every time I see it, she said. Lena brought out the instructions, and Clary sat down at the table to study them. She puzzled over the patchwork of scraps for a long time, tracing the lines with her finger, murmuring the parts of words. What? What you figured out so far seems right to me, she said. I think ip work must be pipe works. And ibrink must be riverbank. So this bit must be down riverbank. 
And then there's a space here to, to edge. Edge of what, I wonder? And does it mean down riverbank? As in walk alongside the riverbank? Yes, I think so, said Lena. Or it means go down the riverbank itself, down the bank toward the water. Maybe edge means edge of water? It couldn't mean that. The bank goes straight down like a wall. You couldn't go down the edge of the water. You'd fall in. Lena pictured the dark switch water and shivered. This was, said Clary, putting her finger on it. Maybe it is an edge. Maybe it's something else. It could be hedge or pledge. Those don't make much sense, though. But it could be ledge or wedge. Lena saw that Clary was no better at deciphering the puzzle than she was. She sighed and sat down on the end of her bed. It's hopeless, she said. Clary strained up quickly. Well, don't say that. This torn up piece of paper is the most help hopeful thing I've ever seen. Do you know what this word is? She pointed at the, to the top to the word at the top of the page. E-G-R-E-S. Someone's name, isn't it? The title would be instructions for Agerston or Ergersman or something like that. The person the instructions were for. Oh, I don't think so, said Clary. And if you add an S to that word, right there, this tears where the paper is, you get egress. Do you know what that means? No, said Lena. Oh, it means the way out. It means the exit. The title of this document is Instructions for Egress. When Clary left, there was still over an hour before the lights went out. Lena raced across the city to Green Great Square. She glanced in the window of the small item shop where Dune's father was reaching for something on the shelf. And then she dashed up the stairs and knocked on the door of Dune's apartment. Right away, she heard quick steps and Dune opened the door. I have sight, something exciting to tell you, Lena said breathlessly. Come in then. Lena went across the cluttered room to stand by the lamp. She pulled from her pocket a tiny piece of paper on which she had written, written E-G-R-E-S. Look at this word, she said. Well, that's from the title of the instructions, said Dune. Someone's name, right? No, said Lena. It's meant to be egress, E-G-R-E-S-S, -E -S, with two S's. I showed the instruction to Clary, and she told me it means the way out. The way out, cried Dune. Yes, the way out, the exit. It's instructions for the way out of Ember. So it is real, said Dune. It is. We have to figure out the rest, or as much as the rest as possible. Can you come now? He darted into his room, emerged with his jacket, and they ran. All right, said Lena. They were on the floor of the green room in Miss Murdo's. Let's take the first line. She moved her finger along it slowly. Number one, EXP, RIV, IP, ORC. Well, we know that IP, ORC is pipework, she said. EXP could be expand or explore or expose. Well, there's a big space between exp and the rest, said Dune. There must be wor words in this. But who knows what they are? Let's move on. Lena swept her straggly hair impatiently from her face. Let's look at number two. Ston marked with E by er Dj. Lena put her finger on esto Eston, S-T-O-N. What could that be? Maybe piston, said Dune. That's part of machine, like the generator. Or maybe astonish, or it could be. Oh, I bet it's just plain stone, said Lena. There's a lot of stone in the pipeworks. Dune had to admit this was probably right. So then he said it would be marked it would be stone marked with E. He frowned a bit at the next. This must be River's Edge. Stone marked with E by River's Edge. They looked at each other in delight. E for egress, cried Lena. E for exit. They bent over the document again. There's not much left of this next line, said Dune. Addy down, ever unk, to edge, upper, eight, low. Hmm. Just this part, which must say down river bank to edge something. Edge of water would make sense. But right after edge, there's app. What could that be? Dune sat back on his heels and gazed up at the ceiling as if the answer might be there. Lena muttered, down river bank to edge, edge. She thought of Clary's guesses about the line. Well, maybe it's a ledge, she said, down river bank to ledge. There could be a ledge down near the water. Oh, yes, that must be right. There's a stone marked with an E, and down the river bank, at that point, there's a ledge. 
I think we're getting it. Once again, they crouched over the page, their heads closer together. Okay, Jim said, line four. Axe to the water, find door of bow, her key, pine small steel pan, the right rem, e, open door. This is where it says door, said Lena. Somehow the door is by the ledge. Does that make sense? And there's a small steel pan. What could that mean? What would a pan have to do with anything? But look, but look. Lena tapped the paper urgently. Here it says key. And here it says EY. It's talking about key. But what is a door to, said Dune, sitting back. Remember we thought about this before. A door in the river, in the bank of the river, would lead under the pipeworks. Lena pondered this. Maybe it leads to a long tunnel that goes way out beyond Ember and then gradually up and up until it comes out at the other city. Uh, what other city? Dune glanced up at the drawings tacked to the walls of Lena's room. Oh, he said, you mean that city? Well, it could be. Dune shrugged. I suppose so. Or it could just be another city exactly like this one. Well, that was a gloomy thought. Both of them felt their spirits sink a little bit at that idea. So they turned back to the task of deciphering. Next line, said Lena. But Dune sat back on his heels again. He stared in the air, half smiling. I have an idea, he said. If we do find the way out, we'll need to announce it to everyone. Wouldn't it be splendid to do so during the singing? Stand up there in front of the whole city and say, we found it? It would be, Lena said. But that's only two days away. Yes, we have to hurry. They were bending again over the glued down fragments when Dune remembered that he should check the time. It was a quarter to nine. He barely had time to get home. Come again tomorrow, said Lena, and while you're at work, look for a rock marked with an E. That night, Dune had trouble sleeping. He couldn't find a comfortable, comfortable position in his bed. It seemed to be made up of nothing but lumps and wrinkles, and it squeaked and groaned every time he moved. He flailed around so much that the noise woke his father, who came into his room and asked, what is it, son? Nightmares? No, said Dune. Just can't sleep. Are you worrying? Frightened of anything? Dune wanted to say yes, father. I'm worried because the mayor of our city is taking for himself the things that people need. And I'm afraid because any day our lights could go out forever. I'm worried and afraid a lot of the time. But I'm also excited because I think there's a way out and we might find it. And all those feelings are whirling around my head, which makes it hard to sleep. He could have told his father everything. His father would have plunged in with great enthusiasm. He would have helped them decipher the instructions and expose the mayor's thievery. He would even have come down into the pipeworks and helped search for a rock marked with an E. But Dune wanted to keep those things for himself now. Tomorrow, the guards would announce that an alert young boy had uncovered the mayor's crime. And his father, hearing the announcements along with the rest of Ember, would turn to the person next to him and say, that's my son they're talking about, my son. So in answer to his father's simple question, he simply said, no, father, I'm all right. Well, then, see if you can lie still. See if you can't lie still, said his father. Good night, son. He added and closed the door. Dune smoothed out his covers and pulled them up to his chin. He closed his eyes, but he still couldn't sleep. So he tried a method that had often worked for him. He would choose a place he knew well, the school, for instance, and imagine himself walking through it, picturing it as he went in minute in minute detail. Often his thoughts would wander, but he would always bring them back to the imaginary journey, and something about doing this would often make him sleepy. This night, he decided to trace his explorations of the pipeworks. He held in his mind to the task for a long time, picturing with all the clarity he could muster everything he had seen in the underground realm. The long stairway, the tunnels, the door, the path along the river, the rocks along the path. He felt sleep drawing closer, a heaviness in his limbs, but just as he was about to give in, he saw in his mind's eye the wrinkled rocks that bordered the river at the west end of the pipeworks. The rocks whose strains, ridges, and creases reminded him of writing. His eyes flew open in the dark, his heart began to hammer, and gave up on sleeping and lay in a state of terrible impatience for the rest of the night.